Hi everyone, Phil from Tech for Techs here. Today we're going to be looking at these Value Tech items by Value Smart Trading Limited, also known as VSTL. And we have links in the description just below. Okay, so we've got two SSDs, two sticks of memory. Let's just have a look at the packaging. So we've got the two and a half inch version here. Uh, it says it's 10 times faster, but doesn't say faster than what. I'm presuming it means a hard drive, ultra durable, and it's a SATA 3.0, and this is known as a supersonic SSD. D, and it's got a three year warranty. On the back, it does give you some specifications, it gives you 560 megabytes a second on the read and up to 500 on the right. You can see the actual SSD through the window with its uh, barcode and everything on there. So that's pretty good. So it's pretty straightforward. On the next one, this is an SSD again, but it's an M.2. This is a SATA based M.2. Uh, it doesn't seem to have a real name other than NGFF2280 and it's got a three year warranty as well. On the back it tells you more about the specifications and again it says up to 560 megabytes read and 500 on the right. And again you can see through as well. We've got two sticks of memory. For some reason they decided to send us a DDR3 stick. I haven't used DDR3 in God knows how long. Um, but we've got one anyway. It's got a nice QR code on there so you can easily um, check it. But surprisingly or not, they didn't bother putting QR codes on the SSDs. Um, also, it's got little tick marks on here to say what sizes it is and so forth and type of memory, and they haven't bothered using those either. Uh, on the back, uh, it's pretty just a plain box, so it's just a wrap around a clear box. Next we've got this, which is a laptop memory. It is DDR4. Again, they haven't ticked any boxes on there. It does have a QR code on there though, which takes you to their website. Uh, but otherwise, that's pretty much it for the packaging. Okay, so let's have a look at the SSDs first. So you've got two and a half inch, it's in plastic casing, nothing special about it. It does have some manufacturer's marks on the bottom. Uh, so not a huge amount to actually see, uh, but you have got that there. You've got an M.2 drive, which the sticker is sort of hanging off of the edge, to be honest with you. So let's just peel it back just to see what we've got in there. So I don't know if you can see the actual memory there. Uh, for some reason they've got a warranty void if you take that off, which is a bit of a pain because some people do like to take those off if you put in a heatsink on them uh, and some motherboards. We've got the RAM, so this is the DDR4 laptop memory here, so you can see that there. There's not a huge amount to really see to be honest with you. Uh, they've only sent us a 4 gig version, so it's not the biggest or anything like that, but uh, well, anything's better than nothing I suppose. Uh, and they have also sent us some DDR3 memory. Not only are they a little bit warped by sending us a DDR3 memory, their memory is actually physically warped. I don't know if you can see that on the screen, but it is actually bent. So there is a there is a sort of a curve there. There's that much of a curve. I can actually stand the memory up on its end, uh, which usually you'll have difficulty doing that. Um, but yeah, so it's actually bent and you can actually push it back down and straighten it out. So we're going to try all these items basically, see what they're like, uh, but uh, it gives you a rough idea what's inside the boxes. Okay, down to testing. First we're going to test the M.2 drive. On the box it says it does 560, or should I say up to 560 megabytes on the read and up to 500 megabytes on the right. But funnily enough you check the website and it actually says it does 452 megabytes on the read and 400 on the right. This is usually down to smaller drives usually do perform well, not as well as the larger drives, unfortunately, on SSDs. So you do get usually a better speed, and that's why they usually put up to, but it's a bit misleading. I don't agree with the practice. It's about a bit like going out and buying a car. You Let's just say you want to go and buy a Ford Mondeo, uh, and you uh, buy the, I don't know, the 1.6 litre version, and they say it can do up to 100 miles an hour, 
uh, but you actually find out that, okay, that model doesn't do 100 miles an hour, uh, you have to buy the model what does, uh, which costs you another, I don't know, £10,000 and has got a two and a half litre engine in it instead. So it's a bit misleading, to be honest with you. But again, most manufacturers do that. But the actual results, we did actually get 556 on the read and 412 on the right. So it actually did perform better using Crystal Disc Mark. And we've got similar sort of results using Atto as well, where we're getting reads of around about 530 and writes of just over the 400 mark. So it does perform better than what it says on the website, but nowhere near what it says on the box. Uh, temperature wise, doesn't look like the thermal sensor works on the drive because it's stuck at 40 degrees throughout the testing, whether it was just sitting idle or working at full load. Okay, now down to the M.2 drive. The box says it does 560 or up to 560 read and 500 on the right. But bear in mind, you check the website on that specific size of centers. It says it actually only reads up to 492 or 388 on the right speed. So that's 492 read, 388 on the right. In testing, we found out it actually performs a lot lower than that. Uh, using Crystal Disc Mark, we've got 460 on the read and the right of 366. And on Atto, similar-ish results, so actually slightly uh, lower. We've got 440 megabytes on the read and the right was roughly around about 350. So again, temperature-wise, unfortunately, uh, it looks like there's no sensor included because it ran at 30 degrees all the way for our test whether it was idle or not the ddr4 laptop memory basically passed our test didn't fail it worked for 24 hours no problem again the only sent us four gigs so wasn't really much of a test to do to be honest with you but it was stable the ddr3 memory i didn't even bother setting a machine up for that i wasn't wasting my time uh, who in this day and age will buy build a new machine using ddr3 memory the only time you're going to use that is repairing or refurbishing an old machine and considering it was bent anyway uh, i was a bit wary about using it so in conclusion, well let's start off with the name of the company, Value Trading or Value Tech or whatever they want to be known as. Whenever I hear a company or a brand with the name Value in it, it gets me a little bit wary straight away because they're trying to promote that it's a good value, which I suppose is good in one sense, but they really need to provide that service if they're going to call themselves that. The products we received were cheap. They were not value, there was no added benefits in them, there was no extras, there was nothing there to give you that extra value. You actually got less in specification wise than what they stated on the box and even on the website. And saying that, the website even comes up with security safety issues when you try and log into it, which isn't a good start. The products as a whole did actually work, with well, exception of the DDR3 memory, we didn't actually test because A, it was bent, and B, well, we haven't had a test reg for DDR3 for God knows how long, because, well, no one uses it anymore, unless it's a really old refurbished machine. While the prices seem good, what they're quoting, the catch is, is everything did feel very good cheap from the packaging to the website to the specifications not being correct and everything along this ways is there was no value in it at all so instead of value tech i'm going to call it cheap tech now if you're wanting to buy stock from china fine that's good and this may be a company you want to work with but just bear in mind minimum order value is 500 dollars on top of that, warranty, obviously, if you do have any issues with the items, you have to send them back. And obviously, if you've got to send them back, and according to them, they seem to think it's a win-win, is if you send the item back, you have to pay for the shipping back to them, and then they'll send you a new item back. So, how's that a win-win when you're having to spend money to send the item back? I'm not sure how that adds up. Uh, on top of that, you've got issues, obviously, with obviously shipping so expect delay times especially on larger orders and on top of that don't forget you've got import taxes and stuff along that line so it's another bill you've got to worry about while you may save one or two pounds on an item the 
The thing is, you're probably going to end up paying it through the taxes and everything else, unless you're buying a lot of stuff. Personally, I would stay away from purchasing from abroad unless you're ordering hell of a lot of stuff and you're willing to go through all the potential bad experiences. Because if let's put it this way, you buy it from UK, you can basically get in contact with someone straight away. You know it's been UK approved or EU approved. While the prices may not be as cheap as getting it from China, you don't go, you're not going to have as many issues with shipping, import taxes, or anything on that lines. And there are good UK manufacturers of actual memory and SSD in the country. For example, Autil. Um, that's a good example of a company to use. And there you do actually get what it says on the tin. So in basics, let's say I needed 100 sticks of memory and 100 SSDs. Would I buy from this company? And unfortunately, the answer has to be no. The specifications on the box are not the speeds we're getting. We're not even getting the, uh, the speeds it specifies on the website. Then obviously, as we said, issues with shipping, import, taxes, we've got some bent memory. So, and on top of that, you go on their website and it comes up with a security error and it's not secure straight away. So that's not a good sign and a good start. And then don't get me started on has it been approved for the EU market or anything along that lines either. So unfortunately, for the first time ever, I am not recommending this product.